It's Nibber Thursday! Woo! <clears throat> and I tried to woo there, but my voice actually I heard caught. some flames. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. Nibber yeah. <laughs> like, Thursday! Yeah. Yeah. So, that's yeah. Nice. That's gross. That's what you get. <laughs> Phlegm and disgustingness. You're, you're welcome. That's this week's. You're welcome. <laughs> that's this week's new brew. It's new Phlegm Thursday. <laughs> new Thursday. No, we're actually drinking something far better than Phlegm today. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. <laughs> really feel bad for saying that, because I mean, you know, it's, yeah. Anyway, so uh, Almanac. Yes, we are drinking Almanac, which is a really cool brewery. They, um, it's interesting because Almanac, they only put out like one beer a year. Yeah, you that's, uh, I was noticing that when we, because we have all three of them right now. We're only going to do two on the show. There's the, the most current release was the Winter Wit, which is the orange label. Um, which magically appears on camera. And then, um, but I have to right away give a shout out to Mike Sardina, who hooked us up with Got these three bottles. Super yeah. fans. Uh, yeah, because I mean, this, these beers are not available outside of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And yeah, apparently, yeah. you know, from what I was reading about them online, you really can't truly appreciate them unless you are in San Francisco eating something local, organic, and sustainable in the North San County. San Franciscan. Yeah, yes. the, the Almanac is very much about, you know, local farmers and, you know, local produce and, you know, partnering up with, you know, people in the Bay Area. That's kind of like their MO, which is really cool, I have I to I like say. that backstory, though. They started out as home brewers doing, like, stovetop batch brews, and they'd get all their ingredients from, like, the local farmer market. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of, like, got them into the, that idea, which is funny because anytime I've been to a farmer's market, which has been, like, maybe twice in my entire life. What um, a shame. I'd love to go, but the only farmer's market we have is a dude that parks his truck on the corner over at Ramona Express Parkway. <laughs> and that's not that's not a farmer's market. Sells that's just a dude. Yeah. There's <laughs> one in Redlands you should check out. Is there? Yeah, on Market Street. They have uh, Market Night. I think they have one in Riverside in summer, too, so yeah. it's worth checking out. Go to a farmer's market. It's Go awesome. to a farmer's market. They are awesome. But every time I'm there, I'm thinking, like, I'd love to brew with this. We're going to open this one first uh, because that is the one that my hand went for. And um, got this. a fancy... Uh, Foil opener. Fancy. One thing I have to say, because it's it's two guys, and one of whom is responsible for um, like the business side and the art, um, and then um, the other guy. I'm. They have names. I just don't know them. Um, but the other guy. Jesse does, and Damien. There you go. Um, and then the other is responsible for you know the recipes and you know the brewing side of it. So um, I have to say that the art is really fantastic. I mean, these are really gorgeous, gorgeous bottles. So yeah, and they're like. I get. Is that raised lettering? It's kind of embossed on there. Yeah, kind of an emboss work on there. Nice. It's cool. Um, so this is what the the farmhouse. This is a farmhouse pale. It's uh, brewed with plums. Uh, they're San Joaquin Valley plums. Mm. They're grown pesticide free by the Sanchez family and their and their small twin girl. At their small twin girls farm in the Central Valley. That's a really weird name for a farm. Twin Girls Farm. It actually sounds like the name small of it. Small Twin. Oh, yeah, I guess it would be. The small is the descriptor yeah, of yeah, Twin Girls Farm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, Twin, twin Girls Small farm, Twin like Girls. Sounds like they a just website. They just never grew up. <laughs> so, grew up. so, anyways, cheers, cheers, Almanac. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Who we also spent the day with yesterday, tra traveling through breweries in San Diego. In uh, North County, yeah. It was fun. I didn't eat. <laughs> so, and I was out. Yeah. And I didn't really have that much to drink. Yeah. It yeah. I mean, we had we had a bunch of tasters, and I, you know, I think the the last bit that sent everybody over the edge was like the speed round of Speedway Stouts. <laughs> at uh, yeah, <laughs> which was the uh, it wasn't just the Speedway; it was the like what Vietnamese, Vietnamese coffee, coffee and yeah. the Ryan Brothers coffee. So yeah, they had regular Ryan Brothers and Vietnamese, and the Vietnamese was awesome. Yeah. Was, oh, I know. This is really good. It's nice. It's got like you know that classic farmhousey, like you know earthy, like spicy funk. kind of funk to it. Yeah, I think exactly. I do kind of get plums in the mm -hmm. aroma though. Yeah, you, know? you definitely get definitely get like that like dark kind of fruitiness in the. And aroma. plums are a unique aroma because they don't really smell. They like they have a, a really unique smell, but it's not strong. Like you never walk into a grocery store and be like, "Oh, fresh plums! I smell them." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> who ate plums? <laughs> who ate plums? <laughs> Your breath smells like plums. <laughs> No, but it's uh, it's, it's got a really nice flavor. Actually, it's nice how that that fruit like kind of pops out. It's extremely smooth. I think the plum gives it a nice little tartness that doesn't really overpower or 
you know, capitalize on the flavor profile. It just kind of enhances it. Yeah, it adds like a certain kind of brightness to it. And it's funny because, you know, usually when you have acidity in Saison, it's because of like, you know, bread or bugs or whatever. And it's interesting having acidity coming from fruit instead. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a different kind of, of brightness. Right. Um, this is really kind of rich, I think, too. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, for a farmhouse, like a standard farmhouse right. Saison, it's... It's got a lot of body to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's something about it that's just like, I mean, I don't think I could have more than one of these. Mm -hmm. It's That's that's what I mean. It's really, really flavorful. Right. And there's a lot going on with it. It's like it. when you eat a really rich dessert, and you're like, this is so delicious, but I do not want any more. <laughs> that's that's exactly what it is. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of separate myself here, and I could drink this all day. No, I... It's I, really nice. If I was in a hot summer day kind of thing, this would definitely go down easy all day long. Hit totally. spot, yeah. Well, um, I, no, I'm not trying to come off as negative about it. That's not how I meant it. I just meant, for me, it's really, really rich. But I'm, then again, maybe it's, I'm sensitive right now to something. I don't know. It has, I like it has a lot of complexity to it, for sure. It's nice because, I mean, you can just kind of sip on it, and you get like, it's like, oh, I get a little bit of spiciness here. I get a little bit of like, you know, like an herbal quality here, and then, you know, the fruit pops out, et cetera, et cetera. So, I, think I didn't save anything because you said you didn't want any more. <laughs> Good call. Um, um, I, I think what's interesting, um, Almanac, the the labeling and kind of their design is is very old world esque. Mm -hmm. um, but they have QR codes on there, which nice. is for the ta the tastings. So it's sort of like old world meets new world kind of thing. And it's, oh, for you the can, pairings. Yeah, yeah right. like if you want to figure out what you want to eat with this, you can, and it'll tell you, you what to it pair it phone. with, like local stuff in. San Francisco. I can't wait for the day where they don't have to explain what the QR code is. I know, when it's just there. <laughs> yeah. Although, they don't in this one. On this one, it's just there. Good. Because it's almost like, here's a QR code, and this is what you're supposed to do with it. So take your smartphone and do this. Well, you should have just explained what you're going to At that point, you could have just had the web address on there. And, and it's nothing bad on them. A lot of, it's like it's everyone thing. has to do that, yeah. Yeah. One cool thing I saw online, someone, uh, I don't know what store it was from, but they had a... Uh, I think it was rate beer ratings mm -hmm. on bottles, mm -hmm. and they had a QR code on all the labels. Yeah, um, yeah, for like the shell so talkers. You could just yeah. go on the QR code, and it takes you to that beer on rate beer, and you can see what everyone says about it. That's pretty so, awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that it's that you know, digital integration of our daily lives. It's kind of awesome. And there, it's a good. We're living idea. in the future, people. Well, it's, the it's a good thing to have. Future. Future it's, is especially, now. especially if it's a lengthy thing that obviously won't fit on a label. Then right. That's when it's good. But if it's just we Click should on put this, a, go to our website, which is at something something dot com. We should put we'll a just, QR code on the end of the show that goes somewhere. <laughs> no, you should put it on the, the end, idea, uh, yeah. at the end of the show that takes you to the show. It'll be like that cyclical kind of thing. It's like an know? infinite loop. Exactly. <laughs> so. I think that would be awesome. It's like you, you, you use a QR code to go or to the show, and then at the end of the show, there's a QR code which takes you back to the show. We could do a third show. It's so meta. Or a, uh, a second show on us on the that we don't way. link to anything except through that QR code. That's the only way you could see it. That would be kind of fantastic. Um, but yeah, it should also be noted um, that for today's show, I am conscious, unlike oh, yeah. last week's show. Unlike several of the shows he's been on. Uh, no, well, but especially, <laughs> especially, especially last week's show. Um, I, yeah, you kind of missed out on that one, man. Yeah, I know. I, I learned. It wasn't a, like we drank anything epic or anything. Yeah, I know. Well, like, like it wasn't like you drank a bottle that I wanted to drink my entire. It's beer. not like we drank a 2002 like, Kuwait. Yeah, Italian. I know exactly. But um, yeah, <laughs> but I, I have no, I, I, I do not hold it against you guys. Well, and technically, we drank a 2003. Bill was said it was a two. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I as did Tommy. Tip. But if you had read the comments on our blog, um, there were two lengthy discussions about it. Um, <sighs> the 2002 dating is the how they do Vintner dating for wine. Oh, so, so that's it's when it like went into it's when it actually went into the barrel. Into the barrels. And so, but it was actually released 2003. Sorry. So, but no, it wasn't like a you guys are stupid. It was actually so we did 2003 uh, Cuvée de Tommy right. and 2011 Cuvée de Tommy then. Yeah, pretty much. Fuck you. No, Cause, and no, cause, no, no. Because now, no, no, now, now the year... No, if we'd done 2002, then we would have been doing 2011, not 2012. No, because... Because 2012 was, was put in the bottle. In or into the that's barrel. what I just said. Yeah. But now they put the vintage as the date the bottle was released. Right. So right. it says vintage 2012, but it's actually a 2011, where the bottle we had that was older was reversed. 
it was bottled in 2002, but released in 2003, so they call it... No, no, no. It was bottled and released in 2003. It was put into the barrel in 2002. Oh, then I'm all backwards then. <laughs> so, <laughs> so confusing. I don't know why we're talking about last week's show. But anyway, anyway Chris, because, because Chris that... Kiroga, thank you for your comments. I appreciated that. Yeah. It was a nice explanation. Um, so if you're wondering what the hell we're talking about, go check out the blog on the last episode, and you can see the comments. Yeah. But the... He actually puts a really good explanation as to why there's that confusion. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, the point that I was trying to get at is... Uh, um, the reason I was not on that show is because I spent the day doing master pairings, which was awesome because I finally got to be on master pairings, um, which the first of which you are now going to see. everyone, welcome to another Master Pairings with me, your host, Bill Sysak, and today we have the newest member of New Brew Thursday, Matt Becker on. How long have you been a member of New Brew Thursday now, Matt? Uh, that's an excellent question. What do you think? Six months? Uh, like, close well, to like, close to like eight, something I was like going to say, I know it has to be off six, because six, I know Stephen had you on parole, and now you're finally going to do your first episode yeah, of Master yeah, exa Pairings. exactly. I so finally am able to. He gave you that full membership guide, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to welcome be here. Welcome aboard. What do we got going um, on here? So, uh... We have a little Duval, little devil for you. Mm -hmm. Classic. Yeah. Duval is a classic. Um, delicious golden ale, eight and a half percent from mm -hmm. Belgium. There you go, yes. sir. Thank you. And it appears that we have something tasty in front of us. Yes, here. we're gonna Let's pair that. Like that. I, a, a lot of my uh, count cohorts, you know, um, always say, you know, with chicken dishes, things like this, which is a great chicken and dumpling, mm -hmm. or uh, chicken noodle soup. Pilsners, Kolsch's. They're easy, they're subtle, they're... That's like the classic, not, like, go-to yeah. pairing. I like to go a little bit over the top, so we're gonna do a little... This has a lot of good depth of flavor, so we're gonna go with the little uh, Duval. Excellent. Cheers. I'm gonna get this all over my face. Beautiful, crisp. Almost, even though there's no corn added into it, I always get a little hint. So you should take it all over your face. Um, I just got it's on my shirt. It's a big old head. This a yeah. beard. Yeah. Anyways, Duval is a great beer. It's very clean and dry. A lot of people are confused. They don't understand how strong it is. They think it's four or five percent. Very easy. Uh, it's very crisp. It's very clean. It has a hint of residual sweetness. Almost gives you this corn-like effect, although there's obviously no corn uh, involved in the mm -hmm. brewing process mm -hmm. in this. But it's just a delicious beer, beautiful white foamy head. That's yep, what it's yep. known for. A lot of really great and, spice uh, notes too. With it, we got a classic chicken and dumpling that's just nice and thick and rich and beautiful, nice dumplings, great chicken. Note the forks. Peas, carrots. This is, this is definitely a forking kind of, kind of uh, mm. meal right here. I always consider chicken and dumplings basically yeah. chicken pot pie. With no pot pie. Yeah. yeah, the dumplings are the are the crust basically. Yeah, exactly. So you have all the same components. So you've got that same flavor profile. If you've never had chicken and dumplings, just think chicken pot pie. It's delicious. And let's see how it goes with the beer. Oh yeah, really bright. Opens up. Uh, goes through any fattiness. Brings out this really nice hot bitterness towards the back of the beer, which you don't normally experience with Duval because you're getting all that sweetness. Yeah, the uh, it's it's nice because like you always talk about the scrubbing bubbles, right. and it's so it's such a creamy, rich kind of dish. You know, I mean, Duval's known for having a you know pretty high level of carbonation, and so it's it got just, great carbonation. It's it just a, cuts right through. It's it. even though we have beers that are made with the kind of in the Champagne. Method Bois mm. style now, stuff like uh, Meller and Deus, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and Loost from Eisenbahn. This is kind of an early version of beer's comparison to a Champagne. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pilsners, you could also go like that with that are highly carbonated, but this is great beer for this. It holds up really well. It has some of those doughy notes too, just like a Champagne would. Mm -hmm. How's that kind of like bready character to it? Which again, goes really well with the, uh, with like that dumpling. Yeah. No, this is the, uh, chicken and this is delicious. Dumplings. It brings out the sweetness of the carrots. And the spice is one thing that's really sticking out to me. I mean, because, you know, Duval has a very signature kind of like characteristic spiciness right. to it. And it plays really well with like the herbal character of the chicken Right, um, which, you know, probably dumplings. would have a uh, classic chicken dumpling. might have uh, parsley, marjoram, thyme, things like that. Mm. And uh, it goes really well. 
It's really clean, refreshing. Mm -hmm. um, different nuances with the Duval. Definitely accentuates. I haven't had just a piece of chicken with it to see how the chicken holds up with it. Mm. You know, what's nice is there, there are also like some like fruity notes mm -hmm. that I'm getting off the Duval. When you get the chicken, it really brings out the fruit. Because um, you get this kind of if I do. roasted chicken effect. Um, it's going to be rude. Which is how they uh, basically would do classically for chicken and dumplings. You'd roast the chicken and then uh, debone it and put it in there mm -hmm. and put it in your mm -hmm. thing. And so that's where really the fruity esters come through on that and really play really well. Yeah. 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 yeah that's wonderful. Delicious beer, delicious food. Duval's very versatile. Um, it, it, it's not as flexible as, say, a pale ale or a German Hefeweizen, but it will definitely go with a lot of chicken dishes, especially if they have, uh, if they're not bland. Mm -hmm. And who wants bland chicken dish? So there's or a lot of great... personality for that matter. Exactly. Don't pick um, on Steven. No, no he's yeah, anything yeah, but bland. Yeah, yeah, we no, know that. No, well, I mean, you know, but... Um, no, this is wonderful, and it's like, like I said, it's nice because it's having something that has that really full richness to it, with like that creamy, oh yeah, with the cream sauce to it, and having something it's very that just decadent, cuts right and comforting. Through, Once again, this kind of the series I've been going through is a lot of comfort foods mm -hmm. recently, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of simplistic foods, things that are easy to do. It doesn't mean you can't appreciate the great craft beer, and you can't appreciate great food. It can be very simple. Yeah, well, it's also nice because when you have, you know, a really great craft beer with a food that you think is simpler, it's amazing right. how the flavors will play off of each other and it'll bring out things that you don't expect. Right. It's you always know. all about elevating both to a new level. Absolutely. And that's what the key is when you have them with them. So, Absolutely. Matt, excellent first show. Uh, thanks thanks for coming on. Uh, we'll have you back. Absolutely. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. So we're back. Thank you for moving that bottle You're just welcome. as we came back. Yes. Yeah, so did you enjoy our little dumpling on his master pairings, his first master pairings? <laughs> it was awesome. Doing the doing the chicken dumplings. I want to say apple dumplings for some reason, and I don't know why I keep wanting to say that. No, it's not the same thing. It was not apple dumplings yeah, at all. No, it wasn't no. chicken dumplings and a delicious duvel, which was actually kind of cool because we did like this, you know, really awesome, like classic beer. Right, you know, right. My first master pairings, you know. So, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Matt was way more excited about it being his first than the rest of us were. We were all kind of like, yeah, dude, whatever. Chop chop. Yeah, you exactly. Got eight more of these to film. Like Move film along. It, just film it, okay? Just get it over with. Yeah. Get into character. Yeah, Mitch. but but me, but me, I was like bouncing off the walls. I was so excited, you know. I was like, yeah, I'm doing the best, best, best. Kind of like that. Yeah. You were also really stoked that all four of us were going to be on a show. <laughs> it really was. And yeah. then and we weren't. And then I, you and asked me about that like eight times. Yeah, I know. Which should have should have told me that you were going to pass out. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, dude. How drunk are you that you've asked me this question like eight times? Okay, okay. And you're like, things. no, I haven't asked. I'm like, you have asked me. I've answered it. Yes. <laughs> okay. No. All of us will be on a show. Okay, no, I have two things to say about this. Number one, um, I am going to go ahead and blame the uh, demons of ale for my passing out because that, the, this is an episode that will, a master pairings that will be uh, up and coming here. Right. Um, because it would be way too responsible for him to take you know, responsibility for his own actions. I accept responsibility. I'm he's just gotta blame saying. Adam he's got to blame Adam Avery because, you know, we all know how Matt feels about Avery beers. Yes, I love them. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, and then the other thing I forgot. So, what's this beer that we're drinking? <laughs> <laughs> Way to segue out. <laughs> he's like, I'm pulling the ripcord. <laughs> This is the uh, summer 2010 ale with blackberries added in aged in aged in wine barrels. Awesome. This um, is one I was looking forward to. Yes, this is yeah. the one I was. This is the one I kept saying when we were talking earlier. I'm like, oh, it has blueberries in it, and everybody's like, no, it doesn't. I'm like, no, it has blueberries in it. No, it's blackberries. Blackberries yeah. are awesome too. Yeah. I'm like, why um, do they got to be black? Yeah. That's 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 uh, <laughs> that's one of the thing that we should point out about that's Almanac. How God is, made um, yeah. <laughs> um, or how they evolved. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> all of uh, all of Almanac's beers actually use a fruit of some variety. With right, think cheers, is cool. this. Yeah, cheers, cheers. This. Uh, this is good. This is good. Oh my god. This is also citra hopped. Ooh, ooh, that's interesting. 
But yeah, so they, they use some variety of fruit in every beer that they do. And, you know, you go on the website and they talk about, you know, the confluence of, you mm. know, fruit and wood and yeast, et cetera, et cetera. I like how they, on the label, they, they, they're they like, this beer that you have in your hand is a snapshot of the Sonoma Valley in the second week of July in 2010. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's like It's like you're drinking a part of that area because mm. it's all from there and you know it's like it, they I, I do when I first heard about this I'll admit I was a little bit like you know the beer cynic in me stepped forward and was like whatever just make beer and sell it to me so I can get it but I kind of actually like <laughs> really like what they're doing here where it's just like this is they're obviously really 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 proud of where they live and their community that they're in and that they want to showcase what's going on with that and I think that's really cool. Yeah. I, you know, it's like that's, that I think is actually what defines artisanal craft beer to me is that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. whole desire to be like completely local, completely sustainable, completely a part of the community that you're feeding back into and creating that cyclical, you know, yeah. relationship with these areas. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll give them credit for that. And apparently this, this does very well with the Triple Cream Brie. <laughs> <laughs> because naturally nothing pairs nothing with pairs with a triple cream bean at all yeah nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah it's all the it's, it's nice because like you know one thing that I noticed with this beer compared to the last beer is how well integrated the fruit is with the rest of the beer you know it's not like super in your face and overwhelming like you find with a lot of fruit beers it's right. it's it's, All of them are very subtle. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. I, well, I, I don't know if I would use the word subtle because I mean you can definitely taste the berry in it. You, it it's it's very much there, but it's very much in well, harmony I think with the other parts of the beer. You know, it says that it's it's brewed with blackberries, right? Mm -hmm. Which I mean, you can go to the store and buy blackberries, right? But they're not blackberries that it's brewed with. It's brewed with like um, Cherokee, Marion, Olali, and uh, boysenberries, which are all black varieties of oh, berries. Oh, they're black berries, not right? Black it's not actual oh. blackberries, so it's like a blend of that. different berries and whatnot. So, and you just get like, with the, with the barrel that you get, you get that little bit of like vanilla and that little bit of mm. oak mm. flavor. See, tossed then in they should put a space between blackberries because it's blackberries, not blackberries, right? Well, I think blackberries. I think when when you buy blackberries at the store, they're not. They're, I don't think there is such a thing as blackberries. <laughs> I'm pretty, no, sure black, is. Is is there, are, I'm pretty sure there is. Is there an actual yeah. thing? I think, okay. I think, I think they're kind of like raspberry, but black, right? Right. Yeah, but, but black. But I mean, yeah. that's what like a lot of those... Like boysenberries, yeah. only one set more. Right, but yeah. see, yeah. Okay, so anyway, but yeah, well, I don't know. I, I always I always assumed blackberries were just kind of like a category of So berries. did they brew this with different blackberries, or was it with blackberries? No, it was with those four different berries. Yeah. You know that for a fact? Um, yes, because I read it on the back of the label right here. Is that said it? I just wanted to make that clear. I didn't want, I didn't want anything. Thinking... That whole part where you were like, oh my God, Steve really knows about this beer. I'm like, no, I'm just reading the label. As I, talk to you. I just didn't yeah. want anyone which, to think. Which is another testament to their labels, I have just to say. just didn't want anyone to think you were jumping to conclusions. These Almanac beers are really, really great. I'm really excited. I, I had heard about them before, but I never had the opportunity. Yeah, well done. So I'm really I mean, great. well done. And I, 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 you know, we talked a bit earlier before the show about the fact that they only do one beer a year. And it is kind of like, it, you kind of step back from that, you're like, really? One beer a year? That's weird. But I kind of, like, having tasted them now, I kind of get what they're doing. It's like... Is that another thing that we are, we know for a fact they only do one a year? Well, they, they've only been, they, we have a... Uh, There's nothing else on their website that indicates that they have yeah. any other beers yeah, than these so three. 20, on this. So, we are jumping to conclusions. We are jumping to conclusions on this. So <laughs> yeah, if we're well, wrong, please feel free to email John at Newbury Thursday <laughs> and rip him a new one. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, um, but yeah, Why I mean, get those emails. I, mean. I love, I, lo I love the fact that they're. It's, it's almost like they're pouring themselves. Their whole year is poured into this beer, and mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 that it's beer cool. and, and, and they're gypsy, too, they're gypsy you know? breweries, right? So yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not like they have a brewing space. Par that they partner, can, partner breweries. Yeah, so they, they don't have a brewing space that they can be in constantly to do other beers either. So that might be that's their only option. But I, I love the fact that it's, it's they, kind they of a cool, it well. yeah, it's kind it of a cool well. concept. Yeah. So. Right on, Almanac, cheers to you. Cheers to Mike. Mike, cheers as well. Absolutely. Good a man. And, um, and a shout out to his uh, sister, who is, Jen, on, who is, who is on not Twitter. on Twitter. <laughs> no. 
Yeah, and and, and you're not on Twitter after we spent three hours talking about how you should... Well, we didn't spend three hours talking about that. But anyway. Um, Dude, anyway. Damn, that's a boring conversation right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was great hanging out with you guys. And uh, as always, until next time, stay safe and drink beer. Cheers. Cheers. I don't know why I did that. Me either. It's a game. <laughs> I quit the beer. <laughs>